Well, me and Nipsey Hussle have been friends for several years, uh, coming up in the ranks of hip hop um, for several years, just underground, working and working and grinding, trying to get to the level that um, we've established for ourselves thus far. Um, so for several years, just watching us just cross paths and inner city, out, out the country and more. And um, hearing the news was kind of like, was an eye opener, it was a shocking. I actually visited his store last week um, on my last trip to, to Los Angeles. I'm just in, in support of each other, supporting each other, local businesses and black owned businesses of what he was actually creating and the curation of that. So I had nothing but the utmost respect for he and he did so as well for me. And um, it was just a mutual friendship. Yeah, I, um, I imagine you're pretty devastated then. Most definitely, but more so about just focused on the lack of protection that we put on each other as black men in America. Being able to see several of us being silenced that easy by us. Unfortunately, every a black man in America has so many different things on him in an attempt to quiet him and muzzle him. To see us be silenced by us is even more devastating. To watch a man who's done nothing but build up his community. You were talking a little bit about what he did for the community and um, a colleague of mine interviewed a, a radio DJ this morning who talked about the fact that he owned his masters mm -hmm. um, and so he was like really the money he was getting he got to directly keep but put a lot of it back into the community. Yeah he was definitely doing a lot of uh, community development more so with even in the plaza where his store is he owned several other businesses in that area um, and all of his talks and speeches he spewed of financial literacy and economical development amongst the community in some of the most ravaged community areas of South Central Los Angeles and Compton and so forth and forth. Uh, political empowering his people by teaching them financial literacy and uh, for a man so young to be so heavily involved in things of that nature is another reason why he will be far more respected outside of just being a rapper and being an entrepreneur and most of all the pride that he took in being a father and a parent. So parent to parent, I think I'm more devastated more than anything of watching his children have to grow up without their father. What do you think his legacy is? Um, his legacy will be, um, if we let others write his legacy, I don't know, they probably just write him off as just being a rapper. That's why we have to do a great job of protecting our own legacies and writing our own histories and doing that so taking to the initiative to understand that this here it is, a guy that came from the ranks of not only just from hip hop, but uh, lasted and survived in a situation where he wasn't supposed to make it to over 21 and over 18. You know, this is a guy who grew up in uh, a tough community and through all of that still allowed himself to rise to the top of the ranks, still allowed himself to defy the odds and that being against all odds, to become a business owner, to become a property owner, to become a landlord, um, uh, a lord of the land, a father, to be married, some things that they don't say that, you know, a, a black man today's time has a chance for. The appreciation that he had for his wife, for his children. These are the things that are far bigger than any record that he ever created or any clothing, piece of clothing that he, that, you know, he put out and that he sold. And the message that whatever they want to convey it as, here it was, it was a spokesperson who spoke for the people of not only Los Angeles, but for around the world. Being his Eritrean descent, he also was very empowered with his people in his country of Africa. So. Um, a powerful man, and I hope that his legacy far uh, proceeds more than just a rapper. Um, some people are saying that this is gang violence. Uh, some people have developed this theory that because he was working on some sort of health movie that wouldn't have sat right maybe with the medical community, that that's what this is about. Uh, have you followed any of that, and, and do you have any thoughts about what it could be here, why he was targeted if he was? At the end of the day, our focus shouldn't be why. Uh, he was targeted. Our focus should be here it is, another man being targeted. You know what I mean? Or being assassinated, being taken from his family. Unfortunately, with the with conspiracy theorists and many people who want to put that out there, we're confusing the narrative. And the narrative is another one of us have been murdered, potentially by another one of us. And what's bewildering to me is. Anytime you see a police officer kill a black person, here's all the riots. But when we kill each other, no one says anything. Or we're trying to shift the narrative and flip the accountability. When will we start taking accountability for what we're doing and silence the violence? Let's do a black stop killing blacks challenge. Let's be more mindful of that. 
and before the theories begin to spread like wildfire, let's give his family time to mourn. Let's give his family some time to process this because this is something that's unbelievable. Never in a million days would you think that a person would be going to his store on a typical day of checking on his businesses and bringing light to the community that he would be assassinated in front of his family, in front of his friends, in front of his community, and unfortunately with social media in front of the world. For there have been videos out there of the paramedics doing CPR on his chest while he's laying on the ground in a lifeless body. These aren't the images that we should be remembering Nipsey Hussle by. And it's unfair to his family as well as to his fans to even see him like that. You seem pretty convinced that whoever the suspect is or suspects that it will be black men. Is that what you're saying? Not at all. Whoever it may be, yeah. whatever it may be. The fact of whoever killed him is the, that's for police to do police work. Our main thing is how are we still in today's time allowing our leaders and our prophets to be taken from us without putting up a valiant effort to, perfect, to protect them? It's no different than several years ago when Bunchy Carter was murdered. And he played the same kind of significant world of rep representing for his people. Several of our black leaders have been destroyed and been assassinated and murdered by their own, as well as by government attempts to kill them, and successful ones at that. So whoever the murderer is, that's police work to find out. The main thing is we shouldn't have to be seeing each other be murdered. We shouldn't have to be seeing each other be assassinated and taken from us in that light. We deserve the chance to live to expire in old age or natural causes. No man deserves to be murdered. Did you and Nipsey make music together? Uh, we have a couple songs that we did years ago, several years ago. Um, and we've been in the studio a few times together. Um, but he and I's relationship was more so, like I said, a mutual respect. The things that I'm doing here and the things that he was doing there, very similar. Very similar in community empowerment. That's why the story struck to me far more than it may anyone else because of the relatability to the situation. For us being both from certain inner city communities, coming up, me being from Oakland, he being from South Central, and us opening up businesses in our communities. This is my second store. My first store was right in the heart and the bosom of my community in North Oakland. And uh, unfortunately, we dealt with some loss from some, some members of the community right on the doorsteps of our, our things, but it was the same thing. We opened up a business in our community to show our friends, our peers, our colleagues, and constituents that this is possible. This is what it's about. It's about ownership. It's about dealing with businesses in our communities and, and, and empowering each other. That's why, to me, it took me a time to kind of step away from it. I was like, wow, that could have been me. That could have been any one of us. But we can't allow this to scare us away from continuing our plight and the flight of empowering each other and pushing financial literacy and continuing to strive for black excellence and representing that every time that we get.